Hi, Scott Orland with Cinema Magazine. The movie is called Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grindelwald, and the two stars are here, Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Waterston. When you did your last incarnation of this movie, you had a co-star and you could not say a word. It was very clandestine. Mm. Was it free now that you could actually intermingle with Johnny Depp? Say the words, Johnny Depp. Do you know what? That was the one secret I didn't have to keep on the first film because I didn't know Johnny Depp was in the first film. Yeah. They shot the reveal of his face actually after the, most of us had left that scene like months later. So this one knew, but he didn't tell me. And so I didn't know really until around when I saw the film that oh, he was I even. It was so such an amazing. Yeah, it was reveal. a very well kept secret. It was. It was. And when when he came to to shoot, like his his name on the set, the set was totally sort of in lockdown. His name was changed, and everything was changed. And and you only ever saw he literally came out because he dyed his hair and shaved. This is on the first film. Shaved it, dyed it, did all of the thing in his trailer, emerged, did the scene, went back to the trailer, <laughs> the hair was dyed back again and he came out and disappeared back into the world so he that was quite wizardly invisible cloaky. Yeah. Well another uh, continuing co-star are some of the creative animals, I mean that's the whole thing, they're mm. fantastic beasts, luckily you didn't have to yeah. do a mating dance this time, I mean. Uh. Oh, how but there's <laughs> some, he, he's got some, he's got some new moves in this one <laughs> that I think, you know, can compete with it. I don't dance. know, nothing can compete. What do you do to the street? <laughs> yeah, I do lick a pavement. That's really true. But how intriguing was it, especially the sequence diving in the water? Yeah. How, how wet did you get? It's a really Ooh. good question, Scott, because on the Movie one magic. hand, I did have to learn, I had to learn, because they shoot it underneath, under a tank, like in a tank, and I had to learn to scuba dive, and they, they sent me, this is the amazing thing about these ones, so they sent me to meet a free diver who worked with me for like two days to learn how to hold your breath for like to get to a zen enough place to hold your mm. breath. So some of it was shot underwater, but the bit when he comes out of the water was shot totally with no water whatsoever. Had Marco, who's my costume guy, slathering me in kind of gel to look wet <laughs> and like, and sort of spraying me down. Um, and so that was all CGI. What fascinates me about this story, obviously it's a piece of entertainment, but yet one can look at it very reflective about the social mores of today. Mm. A guy who's a purist, he wants to keep just the pure bloods, mm. this whole conspiracy going on underneath. Mm. Talk about the brilliance of J.K. Rowling in dealing with these type of issues. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, she, she started working on this first, the, her first draft of this second film what, Three, four years, years ago, ago. Yeah. so she was way ahead of current events, um, which does make you wonder how much of current events are actually there around us years before. If you really pay attention, you can see what's coming and, and um, but I think also know. because it's in, because it's set in the past, what she's also doing is, is exposing what the sort of muggle history was at this time mm. and in some ways how similar it is perhaps to the state of the world at the moment and that's mm -hmm. that sort of idea of we never learn from our history and sort of reflecting it directly back at us is I think what I love is that she does it shrouded in the magic and the wonder and the joy of, of the wizarding world. Yeah. So Have you gotten better with wands? wands? Is there, I mean, I don't know if there's a training camp, but are there little things? Eddie's gotten a lot better. I mean, I was good from the beginning, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> you kind of get over the intimidation of it. it yeah, it took, me, it took me a couple weeks to just, yeah. I think it was the first lesson we had. The, the amazing, our amazing movement teacher, Alex Reynolds, she, um, she said, okay, you know, point the wand at that cup and, and you know, move it across the table. And I just turned bright red. I was like, it's so humiliated. Like, there is no cup and it can't and I move. Can't, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It took a minute and then and then we couldn't control ourselves. Now we, we're probably pretty annoying for the director. Well, I feel like we've we, got we, new we, ideas we for the We realized after the first the film, like in the first film, it was like, we'd be like, what are the special effects going to be? And then we realized after the first film that basically whatever we do, they then they put the special effects. So actually, rather than sort of indicating with the wand, oh, we're going to move that mm -hmm. there. Like if we go that, 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 they then They'll have to, to work it out. And yeah. you see them being like, what did she just do in the last page? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, how, how many weeks of work is that going to be for us? Well, thank but you yeah. for the magic of this interview. Oh, thank I appreciate you. it. Well Catherine. done.